Consider the circuit shown below. Calculate the equivalent resistance of the circuit. Now the first thing I like to do is redraw it. I'm going to call this point A, point B, and point C. So I'm going to start out with the battery. So the positive terminal of the battery is located at point A. And the negative terminal is located at point C. As you can see, this is at point A and this is at point C. Now attached to point C, we have a resistor. And that's the 6 ohm resistor. And attached to point A, we have a 20 ohm resistor and a 5 ohm resistor. And those two resistors meet up at point B which also meets up with the other side of the 6 ohm resistor. So point B is at this location. Personally, I think it's easier to view the circuit in that direction. Now let's calculate the total resistance or the equivalent resistance of the circuit. So notice that these two resistors are in parallel. So to calculate the equivalent resistance of those two, it's going to be 1 over 20 plus 1 over 5 raised to minus 1. And this works out to be 4 ohms. So we can replace these two resistors with a single resistor of 4 ohms, which is going to be in series with a 6 ohm resistor. So therefore, the total resistance of the whole circuit is going to be 6 plus 4, which is 10 ohms. Now I'm going to redraw the circuit on the right side so I have more space to put other stuff. So this is 20 ohms, this is 5 ohms, and this is 6 ohms. And the voltage of the battery is 20 volts. Now what do you think we need to do next at this point? Now that we have the equivalent resistance. With this information, we can calculate the total current that flows in a circuit. So it's going to be the voltage of the battery, which is equal to the current in the circuit times the resistance, V equals IR, Ohm's law. So the total current in the circuit is going to be the voltage of the battery divided by the total resistance. So it's 20 volts divided by 10 ohms. So there's a total current of 2 amps flowing in the circuit. So that's how much current leaves the battery. It's 2 amps which means that 2 amps of current must also enter the battery, which means 2 amps of current flows in this direction. So there's 2 amps of current that flows through this resistor. Now the total current that flows in these two resistors has to be 2 amps. But we'll get there. We'll talk about how to figure it out. Now here's a question for you. Will there be more current flowing through the 5 ohm resistor or through the 20 ohm resistor? What would you say? If you decrease the resistance, the current will increase. So there's going to be more current that flows through this resistor. Now, because 20 is 5 times the value of, I mean, it's 4 times the value of 5, we should expect that the current that flows through the 5 ohm resistor should be 4 times as great compared to the current that flows through the 20 ohm resistor. Now the total current has to be 2 amps. So how can we use this current to figure out what the currents are in these two resistors?
there's two ways in which we could find the answer. Now here's a formula that you can use. So if you want to find, let's say, we'll call this R1 and R2. Let's say if you want to find a current in R1, and you know the total current in these two branches, it's going to be the total current times the other resistor, R2, divided by the total resistance, R1 plus R2. So the total resistance is 20 plus 5, which is 25. And the other resistor is 5. The total current in those two branches is 2 amps. So 5 out of 25 is 1 fifth. So it's 1 fifth of 4. I mean 1 fifth of 2. So therefore, there's only 0.4 amps of current flowing through uh, this resistor. Now to calculate I2, you can use this formula. It's going to be the total current, which is 2 amps, but it's going to be R1, the other resistor, over R1 plus R2. So R1 is 20 ohms, and the total resistance is 20 plus 5, or 25. So it's 2 times 20 over 25, and so the other 1.6 amps flows in this branch. And as you can see, the total current, 0.4 plus 1.6, adds up to 2. So now we have the current flowing through each branch. Now, it turns out that there is another way in which we can get the same answer. Let's call this point A, B, and C. You need to know that the voltage between points A and B, that is across the 6 ohm resistor, plus the voltage between points B and C, which is the voltage across R1, and that's the same as the voltage across R2 because those two resistors are in parallel. The sum of these two voltages have to add up to 20. Now we can calculate the voltage between points A and B because we have the current flowing through the 6 ohm resistor. So V equals IR. Let's call this R3. So the voltage across R3 is the current that flows through it, times R3. So the current that flows through it is 2 amps. R3 is 6 ohms. So the voltage across R3 is 12 volts. Now, 20 minus 12 is 8. So the voltage across R1 and R2 has to be 8 volts. So now we can calculate the current in R1 and R2. So the current is going to be the voltage across R1 divided by the resistance of R1. So the voltage is 8 volts and the resistance is 20. So 8 divided by 20 will give us 0.4 amps. Now for the other one, I2, it's going to be the voltage V2, which is also 8 volts, divided by R2. So that's going to be 8 volts divided by 5 ohms. If you take 8 and divide it by 5, that will give you 1.6. So that's another way in which you can calculate the current flowing in those branches. Now let's determine the power absorbed by each resistor. So let's start with resistor 1. Let's use this formula, I squared R. So there's 0.4 amps flowing through that resistor, and the resistance is 20 ohms. So 0.4 squared times 20, that's equal to 3.2 watts. Now let's move on to the second resistor, and let's use a different formula. Voltage times current. So the voltage across R2 is 8 volts, and the current flowing through it is 1.6 amps. So 8 times 1.6 that will give us a power absorption of 12.8 watts. Now for R3, let's use this formula. V squared over R. So the voltage across R3 is 12 volts, and then we need to square it, and R3 itself is 6 ohms. So 12 squared is 144 divided by 6, so that gives us a power absorption of 24 watts. Now let's calculate the power delivered by the battery. So that's equal to voltage times current. So the voltage of the battery is 20 volts, and the current that flows from it is 2 amps. So 20 times 2 is 40 watts. 
So that's the power delivered by the battery. Now, if we add these three values, that is 3.2 plus 12.8 plus 24, that adds up to 40, which is in harmony with the law of conservation of energy. So the power delivered by the battery is equal to the total power absorbed by all of the resistors in a circuit. So that's how we know if our answers is correct.